Now that we know what 5G is, what are some of its high level capabilities and what are some of the service classes that it is capable of supporting, let's look at some of the practical aspects uh, of 5G and try to understand uh, some of the new use cases or applications uh, that it can support and how it can either offer significantly better user experience or it can enable certain uh, use cases or applications that the legacy technologies uh, couldn't support. The first of which is virtual reality and I'm pretty sure all of us know what virtual reality is. The way virtual reality worked in some of the current or legacy network paradigms such as 4G or Wi-Fi uh, is that uh, any rendering uh, that would need to be made on your VR headset, in most cases, it would come from an application server that would be located somewhere on a central cloud, which is deep inside the internet domain, which would be a few hundred or a few thousand miles uh, away from you. And simply because of that distance, in addition to processing delays, etc., the end-to-end -end latency for such services would be a few tens of milliseconds or even beyond a few hundred milliseconds. And that naturally put an upper limit on how better your user experience could get on virtual reality. And that by extension, uh, put a limit on what sort of experiences we could offer in virtual or augmented reality. That changes with the advent of 5G in two fundamental ways. First up is something we have already seen, 5G is capable of offering significantly lower end-to-end uh, -end, uh, latencies on the order of just a few milliseconds rather than a few hundred milliseconds. And that is one fundamental benefit that 5G can provide to virtual reality. But not only that, 5G uh, is capable of supporting the application server that is brought far closer from the central cloud into a cloud that is at the edge of the 5G network, which is also known as edge cloud. So with 5G, your application server doesn't have to reside a few hundred or a few thousand miles uh, away from you. Your application server for VR, for example, can reside in a cloud at the edge of your 5G network, which is the edge cloud. And when your application server resides at the edge of your network, thus significantly cutting down on the packet delay between your device and the application server, that paradigm is known as MEC or mobile edge computing or simply edge computing. So support for edge computing is the second way 5G significantly improves the end-to-end -end, uh, latency performance of virtual reality systems. So the way it will work in 5G end-to-end -end is that let's say you are wearing a virtual reality headset and you move your head left or right, that signal will go to an application server that is now located very close to you at the edge of your 5G network in the edge cloud and the corresponding response from the server will thus take significantly lower time as compared to what it would had your application server been in a central cloud a few thousand miles away from you. So this is how 5G is poised to significantly cut down on end-to-end -end latency for virtual reality applications by means of its native uh, latency optimizing uh, capabilities and B, by supporting the deployment of edge cloud over here and by significantly reducing the end-to-end -end latency of the VR experience, 5G is well poised to significantly improve the user experience and not only that, open uh, the domain of virtual reality to many more applications that otherwise wouldn't be possible.